Welcome to the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on the issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Before we get started here, we wanted to bring to your attention that October is National Cybersecurity Month. And in celebration of such, there's several great events going on here. And local here to Colorado Springs, if you're in town, please come to the Cyber Synergy at Colorado Technical University. It is the second annual, and we have helped with a lot of the great guests and topics that you've heard on New Cyber Frontier, as well as many other things. If you want to hear the latest of what's going on in cybersecurity, you got to come check this out. It's open to the public, free. 4.30 to 7.30 on October 25th. We hope to see you all there and shake some hands with a lot of the great guests that you've heard right here on New Cyber Frontier. See you then. Hello, this is Abe Thompson coming to you on the New Cyber Frontier from the Secure Set Academy campus here in Colorado Springs, where I serve as the campus director. Uh, here on our podcast today, we have a special guest, uh, Mr. Bill Blatchley. He is a, uh, I guess, a, a mentor for the Cyber Security or Cyber Patriot team uh, for the Civil Air Patrol here in Colorado Springs. Am I correct? Correct. Yes. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about your uh, your unit there and how you ended up there uh, and uh, your desire to kind of invest in those kiddos. Well, I'm with the Colorado Springs Cadet Squadron of the Civil Air Patrol that meets out at Peterson Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. I joined the squadron about 10 years ago when my son was um, interested in doing um, military kind of things and that was a good way to introduce him to, um, to leadership, to aerospace and, and other educational opportunities. Excellent. Shortly thereafter the uh, Cyber Patriot program came along and um, that was a, a good opportunity to use uh, the skills um, from my software development background to uh, instill and, in, and teach uh, middle school and high school students about uh, cybersecurity. And so I've been doing that for eight years and uh, very successful with uh, CSCS um, and our cyber program in, through Cyber Patriot. Excellent, excellent. So um, talk to me about, uh, you talked about having a software development background. Um, and give, give a little history there just on uh, your personal work and some things that have kind of put you in this place. Well, for the last 20 years, I've been running my own software development company, um, Peak Vista, and mm -hmm. we do um, custom software for large companies, sure. so um, try to do turnkey solutions uh, for business, um, business process improvement. And so um, I've done uh, flight crew management for the airline industry, sure. I've done um, uh, elements for uh, uh, train, uh, train companies. Road haul, line haul uh, trains um, and various other transportation uh, industries to solve their business problems using software, to automate business processes through software. I'm a big fan, of course, of trains, and we here in Colorado Springs for sure are. It's uh, very much a part of our history. In fact, the building we're in right now is the uh, or one part of the original trolley buildings here in, in Colorado Springs. And so you have those echoes of history as we implement here, you know, particularly at the secure set, sort of this, um, you know, the cybersecurity industry and the training, the, the modernity of that, but mixed with the echoes of history. Right. So uh, love that. So um, when did you kind of first see that there was a passion that needed to be, or a flame that needed to be fanned in the hearts of kids when it came to cybersecurity? Uh, was it just in your son, or had you seen it before? I hadn't really seen it before, but uh, when the um, Air Force Association created the Cyber Patriot program, um, that was very interesting, very exciting, because when you think about it, well, that was eight years ago, and cyber was important back then, but it wasn't on the, the hearts and minds as much as it is today. The media wasn't talking about uh, security issues as much. Um, you know, eight, nine years ago, but sure. they definitely are now. Right. Um, and so that was a, a good opportunity with uh, my company facilities and infrastructure to bring those, um, you know, young cadets into, into uh, a training environment 
to not only train them in the cybersecurity concepts, but also train them in uh, critical thinking, teamwork, and other things that they'll need to succeed um, post high school. Well, and certainly we're so quick to write uh, this younger generation off. I think it's just epidemic in, throughout history to say, oh, look at these, these kids. And, and yet you on a regular basis get to see um, the glimmer of hope that we really do have for the future. And these kids are no, they're no neophytes at this cybersecurity stuff. I mean, obviously I'm sure you see firsthand just how skilled they are and what level they can already be by the time they're graduating from high school. Oh, that's very true. If you give them the opportunity and develop the, the thought process and develop their thinking skills especially, then they can solve the problems. Um, two of my cadets I've, I've had as summer in, paid summer interns um, over two summers. Excellent. So uh, they exceeded my expectations. I just gave them a, a task and they went off and did it. Things that I didn't know how to do at the time. Sure. I wanted to modernize my email infrastructure and I said, go, go find the solution. Uh, and so they you know, created the, uh, the Linux infrastructure, um, installed the new um, email server, you know, got IMAP and POP and all those things up and running and secured the, secured the server and presto, we're, we're good to go. They can, they can certainly do it. Let's take a break and uh, hear from our sponsor. Over 3 million data breaches happen every single day. That's over 2,000 records being compromised every minute. So often, we focus on securing web data access. But what if the attackers are already inside, having gained direct access to your storage through data management software? When it comes to communications that go directly into your storage devices, make SNIA your first line of protection. SNIA's conformance testing limits outdated communications that are known to be used by attackers. It works continuously behind the background to make sure your storage is protected. To find out if your data is truly secure, visit our website at www.snia.org forward slash cyber test. And this is Abe Thompson here on the New Cyber Frontier coming to you from the Secure Set Academy campus here in Colorado Springs. Our guest on New Cyber Frontier today is Mr. Bill Blatchley. He is a uh, mentor with the cadet squadron of the Civil Air Patrol, uh, particularly in their Cyber Patriot team, a uh, cybersecurity uh, team. And we were just talking about how you've had the privilege of then seeing some of these young people implement their skills in the, in the real world as interns for you. Uh, talk a little bit more about opportunities like that. I think the opportunities are great for, for the, um, this younger generation. Uh, they might not be able to get internships in high school, but they might. There are companies that are willing to take that risk sure. and, and hire them. But what it, in high school, what it does give you though is some practical experience as you're competing, yeah. as you're learning this information, you're working as a team, and so you're springboarding your education. So whether you later come to a company like SecureSet, mm -hmm. or go to get some certifications, or go to college to get your degree, you've already got a, a foundation on which you can build. And using that foundation, then when you do go look for the job, your resume has some things on it that are more than just sitting in a classroom. You've actually done some things and you can show yourself as you know, somewhat knowledgeable in the things that you're, you're trying to accomplish. Well, it's amazing how deep that foundation can really go. I and mean, we're talking about a a pretty deep footer for those construction folks out there. Uh, you know, anywhere from you know Net Plus and, and and some of those certifications, all the way up through. Uh, in some cases, I've heard of uh, Security Plus uh, for some of these young folks. You talked about also willing to take a take a, a risk on some of these young people. We've had the privilege now of seeing uh, two uh, early high school graduates, 17 year olds, come through our program, graduate and get picked up. One by Motorola, uh, one actually on the IT staff of the Broadmoor, and so. The reality is there and some people are willing to take that chance and I think if we're going to talk about this workforce which is so uh, critically empty <laughs> in terms of uh, you know what 3100 here in the Springs and, and many more in the state of Colorado beyond uh, job openings uh, there's, there's got to be some unique solutions. Um, so let's, let's kind of get back into the, the heart of uh, Cyber Patriot. Could you describe a, a typical meeting or gathering of the Cyber Patriot team inside this sort of uh, Civil Air Patrol context, what does it look like? Uh, 
Well, during, during practice, we will sometimes run scenarios mm -hmm. to where I give them uh, competition type images and um, instructions. The, the whole scenario, the whole premise is you're a newly hired system administrator for a company. Excellent. And so you need to make sure that the user IDs that are on the system are the correct ones. You know, passwords are updated and policies are implemented on the, on the system. And so I give them um, those, those clues to you know, spur them on to doing what needs to be done. Um, sometimes during my uh, training, I will have the older older cadets. <coughs> excuse me, uh, the older cadets mentor the younger ones, okay. um, be because that gives them leadership um, opportunities and team leader. You know, as a team lead, um, because you're going to eventually need to do that. Um, in a high school environment, often you work alone, because if you work together, sometimes that's called cheating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But in the real world, you need to work as a team. Absolutely. And that is a, a skill that is not something that you can read in a book. No. You need to actually do it. Yeah. And so by being a part of a team, learning the, the strengths and weaknesses. You know, we need to do um, Windows security. We need to do Linux security. We need to do networking and Cisco um, components within the competition. So I need to make sure that somebody on each team is covering those those elements. Yeah. The team members need to figure out who is the strong and who's the weak person and learn how to adjust, especially during competition. Yeah. During competition, I can't say anything. Oh, wow. I, yeah. I, I can't coach or mentor during that. They're on their own. The coach on the sidelines, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a tough challenge. It's a tough challenge to keep your mouth shut and, <laughs> and not um, interject and, and lead and guide them during the competition. Sure. They have to, they're on their own. The, the leaders have to have been developed during yeah. that time to be able to take charge and solve the problems and make sure that everybody's staying on task and getting the job done and not getting you know, tunnel visioned. Yeah, admittedly that's a, I won't say a lost art, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a, an art that the community strive, uh, starves for and that's leadership and, and you're translating leadership down to you know, the, the rank and file, and that's, of course, we, we grew up with in the military. Um, in fact, I, I love that model of having the older cadets sort of train and mentor the others. Um, I think the Latin phrase was, qui disquet docet, he who teaches learns. And there's, there's rarely a more profound way to do that than actually doing it yourself. Now, do, they, do the cadets wear uniforms during practice or just competitions, or what does that look like on the military side? Uh, with our Civil Air Patrol group, um, they're coming over to practice right after school, mm -hmm. so it's a little inconvenient to wear the uniform sure. during that time. But during our competitions, when we're taking um, taking pictures and sure. sometimes have guests, then we will, you know, wear the uniform, either the um, Air Force Blues mm -hmm. or our ABUs sure. that the Civil Air Patrol is allowed to wear. We'll wear those during competition. Sure. It gives them a feel of professionalism. Yeah. Gives them a feel of of purpose and identity. And so that, that helps, I think, to, to give that, uh, you know, let's suit up for the game. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, and, and certainly that can't be forgotten. Um, and I think most folks in our industry recognize that cybersecurity is not just a commercial sector endeavor or a defense department endeavor, but all of us in cybersecurity are really, truly defending the American way of life in particular. And so the weakest link in our country is literally the weakest link, whether that's a bank or a hospital or a military unit. I mean, all of us are defending the American way of life through this, through cybersecurity and defense. Right. And sometimes the weakest link is the, the person in the loop. Yeah. And <laughs> even, you know, I've had several of my cadets, they really don't want to go into this professionally. Uh, they're looking at other opportunities and that's fine and that's great because they've picked up information yeah. that 10 years from now when they're working in a hospital or working for a doctor's office or working for a, a bank they may see something and in the back of their mind the concepts of you know cybersecurity will come forward and they'll be able to you know point out some things perhaps to sure. uh, to their peers and even if it's not professionally even if it's at home just learning the the basics of good you know, cyber hygiene to make sure, sure that you're doing the right thing, that you're not opening up your your uh, 
network to anybody that you're using good practices even if right. you're at Starbucks on the on the sure. Wi-Fi sure well protecting their own children you know learning as children to protect their future children right. is, is key and I think that's critically important certainly they're gonna sit in the seats of industry they're gonna sit in the commander's chairs that you know all these other places where they'll have to receive uh, insight from their cybersecurity uh, components of their organizations and and I think any uh, any exposure is going to be great because uh, I know that there are plenty of organizations out there that would uh, that would love to <laughs> take back what's happened to them oh, yes. uh, because of their uh, lack of attention uh, in these key and critical areas. You know, I think about the major major loss when that one particular organization were for, was for sale, got breached, and then lost about what was it anywhere from three hundred to eight hundred million dollars in their value almost overnight. Uh, and for some of those, when, when we know what the, uh, the nexus of the attack was, mm -hmm. um, and if I know those things, I will explain to the, the cadets what happened yeah. and tell them that hey, the stuff that we are learning as you know, middle school and high school students, those concepts would have thwarted many of these attacks. Sure. And so that gives them some real world perspective of, yes, what we're learning now you know, the big company forgot that sure. and did not implement it correctly, yeah. and therefore they were breached. Yeah. Now, of course, not all uh, breaches can be thwarted by, you know, Cybersecurity 101, but many of them can. Sure. If you leave the door wide open, somebody's going to come through. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> let's take a quick moment to, to go and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back with the rest of today's show right after these brief messages from our sponsors. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. And we're back here on New Cyber Frontier. My name is Abe Thompson, coming to you from the Secure Set Academy campus here in Colorado Springs. On New Cyber Frontier today, our guest is Mr. Bill Blatchley. He is a Cyber Patriot uh, mentor with the Civil Air Patrol uh, here in Colorado Springs. Um, we were just talking, Bill, about um, how some students that you've had may not go into the industry and, and, and will go on and yet take with them great lessons that will help them anywhere. Do you ever see the reverse where some come with, they're not sure, and then they end up, end up transforming and going into and staying in the industry, similar to a couple of those interns you had. Oh, definitely. I had one student um, cadet um, eight years ago. His his goal in life was to become a marine biologist. <laughs> um, he's now working for Broadcom. Okay. Um, as a cybersecurity engineer, went to um, to CSU, finished up his degree, and um, now he's a paid professional in in the industry. You know, with many years' experience. So. I'm sorry, uh, marine biology's loss is uh, <laughs> cybersecurity's gain. Well, and it's certainly got to be gratifying, though, when you see them uh, actually exercising the, the skills and the disciplines that you've invested in them and succeeding. And, you know, I, I celebrate every time, you know, one of our students or one of our graduates gets a job, you know, and, it, it, you know, celebrate all the highs with them in that regard because uh, that's the outcome that we here at SecureSet look at is, is, is the job rather than right. just, just the education piece. Um, so as you look at the cybersecurity industry today, um, what do you see as sort of our major challenge or issue to overcome? I think one of the major challenges is just the, the lack of, of the workforce and being able to train people for this um, industry. Sure. Uh, there are many avenues for that. Um, one needs to have the temperament to be able to do this technical work. Sure. And those are hard, hard skills to determine whether or not the person is, is suited for this line of work. Sure. Uh, but giving everybody the opportunity that wants to and giving them the, um, the ability to get out there and, and get a job and have that practical experience. So really the education pipeline is 
is um, very critical to any industry. Cyber, you know, is no exception. And of course, the, the sooner we can start somebody on that path and, you know, in the, the high school level, give them a broad picture of many different opportunities and let them find one that, that suits their, their skills, whether it's, you know, any STEM discipline, whether it's, it's teaching, writing, uh, medical, any, anything to see what they would like to do, what is their um, skill set, what is their uh, desire, sure. what, what makes them um, happy. Well, and I, I think our industry is diversified <laughs> enough um, and, and grown even that, that it's really opened up to a new category of folks. I mean, we no longer are just one personality temperament. And you look at sort of the hunt uh, concept, that forensics approach. A lot of those folks are political science and English and history majors that have a propensity toward the technical. If they can at least be conversant in the technical, they can still be quite an asset uh, to um, our, our, our industry, if you look at the analytical side, for sure. Definitely. And your traditional computer science degree has a lot of math in it. Yeah. Well, not that math is not important in cybersecurity, but you don't need the same level of math skill, so therefore it does open up. Sure. I know several students that were not that great in math, sure. but that yet they are have uh, obtained their computer security degree yeah. Yeah. and are very productive. They would not have been able to uh, survive Calculus 3. Sure. But problem solvers. You they're, know. But they're very good problem solvers, but mm -hmm. not uh, you know, not that mathematical problem sure, solving sure. that is required in some other degrees. Well, even in the entry level in our discipline, and when we talk about cryptography or encryption, um, so our approach here at SecureSat, of course, is, is you know, we do teach crypto encryption, uh, uh, cryptography uh, in, a, in a general sense, uh, in terms of principles and practices and anomalies and vulnerabilities and strengths, but uh, the objective is not to make them higher maths folks, even though, say, one of our co-founders here was a, his PhD is in cryptography. Um, it's not necessary, especially in the intro level, to be, to be a, a you know PhD level cryptographer. Correct, correct. Um, Give them the exposure to those things so they understand the concepts and and can talk about what a public and private key is and sure. why we need that. And in cases that we don't, then um, yes, it gives them the foundation, uh, but not that they're necessarily going to be the ones that are going to try to decrypt and crack that um, sure. that big long code. You know, it's uh, interesting. Um, I hear a lot of folks uh, that, that come through or maybe approach this discipline or show maybe a, a modicum of interest, they're just simply scared. They, they just say, oh, I couldn't possibly, oh, it sounds interesting, but I couldn't, you know, they like the mystique of the hacker and, and that, 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 that uh, <coughs> persona, but, but they're afraid to try. And so I spend a lot of time just convincing them that, yes, it's possible you can do this. Um, you know, it's just, you got, you got to stick to it a little bit. But. And that's what's one of the great things about the Civil Air Patrol program and um, Cyber Patriot is it does give a very non-threatening, very easy way for a student to get an introduction into that, into the concepts of cybersecurity Excellent. and then actually see that, yes, I can do this. I can configure this computer to enforce password policies, login policies. I know how to do that now. Great. So you're now ahead of the game of many people in the IT world sure. that might not know how to do that. Sure. And so and you can see the benefit. You can say, well, I've got a three character password, you know, <laughs> good for me. Well, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, how can we make the person not do a three character password yeah. on, on the computer right. by loading that policy and see the benefit of that. Sure, sure. Um, you know, speaking of the Civil Air Patrol, um, there's probably parents out there that would love to see their kids on a, on a better trajectory or on any trajectory. Uh, it, what was the charter of the Civil Air Patrol and then sort of this, this as it kind of evolved into the Cyber Patriot piece here, and, and how might a, a parent direct their, their kid to, to get into something like this? Well, Civil Air Patrol was chartered uh, back on December 1st, uh, 1941, just a few days before Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. as a civil defense organization. So even before the Air Force, even, actually, even 1949, before, yeah. Even before the Air Force. Uh, so. Um, Civil Air Patrol was um, looking for um, German subs and mm -hmm. doing a coastal recon um, in the World War II area, sure. era. Um, after World War II, became chartered to teach aerospace. Yeah. 
um, emergency services and cadet programs. So the cadet programs, it's um, we have a military structure, but we're not military recruiters. Sure. Uh, so a parent or a, a potential cadet could go to the website, gocivilairpatrol.com, okay. um, and get some information. There is a link at the bottom that you can find a local squadron. Um, within Colorado Springs, there are um, several different squadrons, depending on their, their location in town and when they can meet. And there are instructions for you know, gaining access, you can come, check out uh, you know, three or four meetings and see if it's what you would like. Um, our, big, our big goal with uh, the Cadet Squadron is leadership development. We want to give them a chance to develop as leaders and to uh, take charge of, of you know, students within their, their peer group and solve problems and you know, be a leader. Whether it's marching, learning how to march, well, mm -hmm. there, there's some leadership and there's some learning involved. Or doing you know, Cyber Patriot, um, doing uh, model rocketry, STEM launches, uh, Civil Air Patrol also gives the cadets the opportunity to fly in our Cessna 182 aircraft, get an aviation um, background to see if aviation is something that would be of interest sure. to them. So um, I know that there are Cyber Patriot teams in several schools in the area, so they're governed by you know some of the child protection laws and all those other things. and. And I assume very similarly in terms of what's required of a leader in, in Cyber Patriot, if, if, a, if a parent or someone wanted to invest their child or even be involved themselves, uh, are those things in place as well? Yes, Civil Air Patrol has um, our cadet protection policies mm -hmm. and training that all adults, all, well, even cadets that are over 18, will go through this training to make sure that they know what's, what they're to do and what they're not to do. And, and yes, we're bound by the same uh, reporting laws and um, you know, to make sure that you know, cadets aren't one-on-one um, -on -one with a, mm -hmm. a senior member. It's always a two-person two rule. Um, so just a good, solid uh, cadet protection policy sure. to prevent any issues that, that might come up. Sure, and it's, and it's you know, sad to even have to, have to think that way, but in reality, in our cybersecurity discipline, we're aware of, uh, of that each and every day. And one of the things I've often heard in this vein is uh, one of the better ways to protect kids even in the uh, cyberspace is to educate them earlier. An educated uh, child, I hear, in terms of the cybersecurity vulnerabilities is often uh, better convinced of, of being careful themselves online. Do you agree and does this work? I think education is always a good thing, mm -hmm. um, but of course I always want to defer to the parents and what their, their values and what their desires for you know, online activity might be, so I'm not going to push you know, my cadets into um, saying that you have to have a computer to right. use 24 <laughs> by seven. Um, no. Heaven forbid. No. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that anything that I say falls in line with uh, and doesn't, doesn't try to usurp the parent's authority. Yeah, and I love that model, um, wholly support that. In fact, I think our education system in general is completely departed from that concept. You know, if you look at uh, sort of the direction of education, it's almost as if you send your kids off to some public institution, they're reprogrammed and they're, they're learning things that you wouldn't teach them at home. And, right. and so I appreciate your recognition of the parents' role and, and leadership in that regard. Um, and then, uh, so more specifically for the, the parents who might want to volunteer or adults out there, I know there are you know, tons of cyber professionals out here that are looking for other ways to give back. Uh, how might they jump into supporting a Cyber Patriot or Civil Air Patrol? Well, through, through Civil Air Patrol, an adult could become a, a senior member. Mm -hmm. There are procedures for joining, um, and so you could, you could serve as a, as a pilot or crew member, mm -hmm. um, aerial photographer in our emergency services um, um, division. You can serve as a cadet leader mm -hmm. um, in the cadet program to, to lead and mentor cadets. There's sure. various opportunities there. As far as a cyber professional, well, CAP is, we're trying to, to develop more of a, a cadre of, of cyber knowledge within Excellent. the organization itself. But um, outside of Civil Air Patrol, through the Cyber Patriot program, a, a person could register as a mentor okay. and find a team. You can go to uscyberpatriot.org okay. and register as a volunteer. Um, AFA, the Air Force Association, will do a background check Good. on people that, that volunteer. Excellent. And um, 
then once they are an approved mentor, then teams that want mentors can find your information and your short biography sure. on the website, and then uh, the mentors can find teams that are looking. Great. And you can click the button to contact the team or contact the mentor, and then engage in a dialogue. Is it a good fit with what what you what skills you bring sure. and what skills um, the particular team is is short on? Sure. And um, you know the time. Some mentors are virtual mentors, and they will do things um, via web conference. Others will go in person to the to the school or the the organization and help out in person. You know, one day a week or whenever they can. These are all uh, uh, excellent things to hear. And so in terms of um, the class itself, uh, or the team itself, is there sort of a curriculum that you take the, the, the team members through to prep them for the skills they need? How's that built inside of uh, Cyber Patriot? Air Force Association has some modules, some mm -hmm. initial modules that are available for the for the coaches and for the teams Great. that step you through a few you know Cyber 101 things. Okay. And then the mentors take that to the next level um, and point out the, the areas where okay, the, the module, the, the training module points to certain other external documents or external websites. Let's go and dig into those. And then the mentor um, or coach just take, takes that and then goes to the next level sure. and teaches and trains on how to administer these computers, how to uh, be an effective team leader, um, critical thinking skills, you know, I try to give them critical thinking um, huh. exercises sure. to, to work through, okay, what am I, what am I saying? In the, in the business world, your customer will come to you with a, a vague and nebulous requirement. You now have to unpack that vague and nebulous requirement <laughs> to find out what the customer really wants. What sure. do they really expect? Well, we try to develop that skill and, and you know, when the, when the student reads the readme file for the, for the competition, okay, what are they really trying to, to convey sure. here? And well, dig, dig deep into what needs to be done to secure the systems in the sure. competition. You hit on something near and dear to my heart and probably to middle school and high school parents out there. And I assume you do house calls to come to our homes and teach our kids how to do critical thinking. Is that, is that possible? <laughs> I, We're trying I, to get it to stick. I, I'm not sure you can teach that. You can, you can model it. You can but certainly it's, model it. It's, right? it's hard to teach that it because is. It's, a, it's a soft skill yeah, yeah. That, that is so vitally important. Yeah. Um, even, even just responding to email and responding properly mm. in complete and full sentences and those, those life skills, uh, though, those are things that are often left to chance. LOL, as they say, mm -hmm. you know? Um, well, you know, uh, Bill, it's, it's a delight actually that, uh, that even the halls of our building here at SecureSet uh, echo the sounds of Cyber Patriot uh, Civil Air Patrol folks. Uh, we have the privilege of hosting uh, your team here in the building. I'm very open to that. I'm sure there are many ways that you out there in the community can support endeavors like this for the sake of our future, uh, for the sake of seeing what Bill gets to see on a daily basis in terms of light bulbs going off and the, the brightness and the light behind the eyes of some of these young people as they go on to bigger and better things. Uh, Bill, it's been a privilege to have you here on the new Cyber Frontier. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Abe Thompson coming to you podcasting from SecureSet Academy here in Colorado Springs. Uh, I've been your host today on the new Cyber Frontier. The views or opinions expressed during this podcast are not those of Colorado Technical University. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at NewCyberFrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.